It's 10 after 10, and we are uh, headed out from our campsite in the honey hole. It's a cloudy day. There's a decent wind already coming from uh, the prevailing west. And we're leaving our excellent campsite. This was a great site. Nice big rock, everything dried out, had a wind in our face. The bugs weren't too, too bad. They weren't good, but manageable. So we're headed off today with the wind at our back, uh, down this channel into Funger. And then uh, we're on to Caribou Creek and Caribou Lake. And we're actually really not that far from our pickup place uh, a day and a half from now. Shortcut access. Maybe break up, break, break. Hunger Lake. So that's uh, that's another campsite there. That's actually a really nice one. Wouldn't have been as windy. Bugs probably would have been worse. Hunger Lake. just completed our first uh, 50 meter portage of the day and there's a nice little cascade directly across from us. Maybe on the left, Rye? Right? Left. It's really short. Sure. 
yeah, you should be able to. It's gonna be one or two spots that might be a bit tough, but. Just been fishing and portaging around nice little uh, rapids just like this. There's not a lot of elevation change, everything just kind of rolls over the rocks. What you got? Ooh, little pick. Good job, Brad. That's good. How many you caught so far? Two. Or do you want me to do it? I really wish he had a jig in his mouth. So we've stopped for lunch. It's uh, 25 after 2. We started right here in the honey hole on Funger Lake and we've been working our way down the Caribou River with a series of portages as we go. Now, if you can see, not really, we started working our way down here and we are now right here on this island on Caribou having lunch. Uh, we still have to go down the Caribou and into somewhere around here on Caribou Lake. I know you can't see anything on the camera but basically once we get to the estuary on Caribou Lake we're going to try and find some sort of nice island campsite. So we stopped for lunch. Uh, the usual. We didn't catch anything of uh, adequate eating size, so we're not having shore lunch today, and uh, we'll have shore lunch. yeah, we'll have, we'll have some sort of shore lunch, but it certainly won't be fish. Bye for now. So it's four o'clock, we've made it out of Caribou River, you're now looking into Caribou Lake, a small, small portion of it. Um, we just stopped because we, we see a sign here. Basically, we are now leaving the Wabakimi um, area, can, uh, Provincial Park. So we're now into Crown Land on Caribou Lake. What's your thoughts, Rich? Thoughts on? I don't know, anything. Trip so far? Yeah, it's good. It's been good. I don't know, I don't have any like super wisdom things to say. Other than, well, it was nice today to do like a pretty easy day. Yeah. Didn't do too many kilometers, spent lots of time fishing, stopping at places like this sign instead of just paddling on past like we normally would. Yeah. Attempting to start a fire with a wild wide angle lens. Observe the concentration, the patience, and the disgust that a cloud just passed in front of the sun.
after eight. And we've all packed up our bags. We're leaving our second last site of the trip. It wasn't a bad little island site. Uh, but we woke up this morning. Uh, it already rained once. And the wind is still up. It's not as calm as we'd like it to be. We have a couple options. We can either hang this corner and go around the west side of Beaver Island, or we can shoot down this gap and go around the east side of Beaver Island. Either way, there's a big island in the way of where we want to go. So we just kind of got to make a decision here as a group and head into the wind. right up in there, right? Yeah. Do you see any mouth of any creek whatsoever? That's gotta be it. So we're leaving Caribou Lake in the rain on a very small portage on a very big shoreline, but it is marked. You can see the uh, marking tape, so that helped. It's quite wavy, it's pissing rain. We're trying not to smash the boat here. I'm gonna swing the nose back around to the right or left. Don't get too crazy when you jump. We did it!
Okay, so during this trip, uh, most of the lunches we've been eating cured meats. I just wanted to say a huge shout out, a uh, huge thank you to my good buddy Steve Storms. I just want to show you what he uh, provided to us when we packed on this trip. And we've been uh, eating them most days for lunch and they've kept well. So here's some of the sample of the meat we have left over still uh, from Steve. So he vacuum sealed these cured meat sticks. So this one is uh, kobasa. Um, we froze them. Uh, he gave them to us throughout the year. We froze them all, uh, brought them out of the freezer and brought them on this trip. And this one here, uh, it's unmarked, but it's three different varieties of meat. Um, like one's like a pork loin, one's like a, I can't remember what this one is. But anyway, so we had uh, three, I think, packs of pepperettes that we've already eaten. And now we're on to uh, these two bags on our last couple days. And it's just been really nice to get something, uh, a good source of protein, fat, and salt. Uh, mixing in with the, the lunches that we'd packed. Thanks again, Steve. Stay there. It's six o'clock and we are at our last campsite of the trip. We are only two kilometers from our pickup tomorrow at two. So we have lots of time. We're gonna be sleeping in fishing. This campsite, uh, it's on the Caribou River marked big on the site on the map that was a nice fire pit somebody left a chair <laughs> um, it rained as soon as we got here so we set up the tent we have a bit of a gear explosion underneath it and we have our hammocks which we all took a little bit of a nap one two and three we're set up really good for tomorrow uh, we're gonna sleep in as much as we really want to uh, eat a nice big breakfast and then we are just headed down Caribou Creek for two kilometers. There's a marked beaver dam that we may have to pull over. And then at two o'clock, the outfitter is going to come pick us up. And uh, hopefully we can find a nice spot to fish for an hour, an hour and a half, while we wait for the pickup. And then our trip is done. So basically the hard work is over. Today we crossed Caribou, which was... Uh, Windy, very windy. Island hopped from site to site. Uh, made it through though. Uh, the afternoon was Caribou Creek, uh, Caribou River, not a creek. It's quite wide. Uh, a couple nice campsites coming down there, and uh, it was a pretty, pretty lazy paddle. Wind at our back, and we are now at our campsite for the night. We, we all did take a big nap, so we're gonna it's six o'clock now. I think we slept for three hours, maybe. And uh, we're going to have a big fire tonight, stay out, watch the stars, and enjoy our last night in Wabakimi. Great trip so far. Good morning. It is 10.35. We uh, are all packed up on our last campsite. Um, we had bacon and eggs this morning, uh, several pots of coffee. We've been up since about 8, 8.30. We have a very, very short paddle today. We're headed off between these islands probably a kilometer and a half maybe until our pickup at two uh, and it's quite windy today and even though we're in a small channel it's whistling down here pretty good so I bet, uh, I bet Caribou Lake is, is quite the beast today so we're off there's not gonna be much footage today uh, just a bit of river to go I think there's one beaver dam there's not even uh, any rapids or anything and we're uh, we're off to the outfitter and then our drive home
than what we went over. <laughs> Which maybe at one time was a beaver dam, but... All those rods are getting hung up. I thought you were going to fling that one at me from two feet away. Rag guy? Good trip. Good trip. Catching fish with Evan Bryden. Nailed it. Really was pretty sure that he had a snag. <laughs> I don't catch snags, man. It's been days since I caught a snag. Oh. Hi, Sky. How did you like it down there? What? <laughs> yeah. What's up? You forgot your camera, so I uh, took a little video. Nice. <laughs> I wonder how my favorite sports teams do. I wonder if the Jays have won a game. <laughs> the answer's no. <laughs> yeah. It's not a camera, is it? Oh. <laughs> 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 What did I do? <laughs> I thought you were filming Ryan's back. I'm like, I'm gonna <laughs> soak him. <laughs> no, it's just filming his paddle. <laughs> I'm so <sick. laughs> Thanks a lot, Ryan. Thank you for watching our eight day adventure through the wild and beautiful Wabakimi Provincial Park. Since the park's creation in 1983, this nearly 9,000 square kilometer boreal park has been providing backcountry enthusiasts with everything they could ask for. Numerous lakes, both large and small, countless rivers and canoe routes to explore. And don't forget the world-class fishing. At the beginning of our trip, we were blessed with two and a half days of excellent weather for paddling and portaging. We experienced over 25 degree weather with very little wind, and we managed to complete the first three days of our trip with very little difficulty. By the time we reached Best Island, we were well ahead of schedule. However, on the evening of night three, we rode out a pretty significant storm at the Beckwith cabin. From the next morning onward, the weather was noticeably different. The temperature had dropped by five to 10 degrees. The prevailing winds were becoming more substantial. And we experienced intermittent rain on most of our days. Yeah, that's a lot of rain. And it came in quick. This made for some pretty dodgy crossings on the larger lakes remaining on the trip, mainly Smooth Rock Lake and Caribou Lake. On this trip, we traveled a total distance of approximately 160 kilometers, with only five kilometers of that being portaged. We averaged around 20 kilometers per day and easily completed the journey with the conditions we experienced. We carefully planned this trip over the span of almost two years. We attended the outdoor show in Toronto in the spring of 2019, where we met our outfitter in person and paid our deposits. Just booked Wabakimi. We're going to Wabakimi this year, guys. Cheers, boys. Cheers. After driving almost 1,700 kilometers, a total of 22 hours of travel, we finally arrived at Wabakimi Canoe and Outfitters. And in closing, we would like to thank Bert, Brenda, and Bruce 
for being tremendous hosts, providing excellent maps and personal knowledge, and for helping to make this trip a reality. Their lodge on Matisse Lake was an excellent place to rest and relax before and after the trip. We would recommend Wabakimi Canoe and Outfitters to anyone who is planning a trip to Wabakimi to enjoy one of Northern Ontario's best parks. Safe travels and happy paddling from the boys here at Single Mountain Maps. <laughs>